What is a lobbyist? Let's take a look. There are two types of lobbyists, ones that make money and ones that don't. However, they work pretty much the same. A lobbyist represents a special interest group, for example, a corporation like Microsoft or a nonprofit organization like Save the Whales. Let's look at a, a lobbyist who represents a corporation like Microsoft. First, Microsoft has its own self-interest, which is then expressed to the lobbyist. The lobbyist is paid by the corporation and his travel expenses are taken care of. The lobbyist goes to Washington, D.C., where he there will meet with an elected official or congressman, for example. It is the lobbyist's job to express his ideas to the representative. However, there are strict laws against bribery and gifts. With that out of the way, the lobbyist and the representative now meet to discuss the lobbyist's concerns. After the lobbyist successfully expresses the ideas he represents, Microsoft's interests, the politicians are now aware of these concerns. The politician sits at his desk and writes, sponsors, or amends a bill or current piece of legislation. After which, the politician and perhaps other politicians the lobbyist has met with will then produce a piece of legislation. The bill will now include the ideas the lobbyist expressed to the politician. Lobbying is one of the most influential activities in Washington. Every day there are lobbying groups fighting for their causes in DC. A lobbyist is a person who tries to influence decisions made by legislators and officials in government on behalf of some special interest groups. An industry, corporation, or group of people with aspirations to better themselves or the public good, usually through the means of legislation. Since 1998, 43% of the almost 200 members of Congress who have left government have registered as lobbyists. One of the biggest problems, obviously, has been the potential ambiguity of such activities, but has been alleviated by recent acts passed in the past decade to make lobbying more transparent. In 1995, the Lobbying and Disclosure Act required lobbyists to register with the Clerk of the House of Representatives and the Secretary of State. Anybody not doing so could be punished to up to $50,000. In 2007, the Honest Leadership and Open, Open Government Act was passed under former President George W. Bush that placed more restrictions on gifts to members of Congress and mandatory disclosure of earmarks or funds to specific projects. I've been involved with several environmental organizations, I still am, but when I was involved with a group called the American Cetacean Society, we were involved in all sorts of marine conservation and habitat protection related issues. Um, there were a number of us who were, um, who, were, who were basically sent up to Sacramento to talk to assembly persons and uh, state senators because this was state legislation that was proposed. There were some good bills that had been proposed that would uh, you know, protect those areas from development. So we uh, went up and made appointments with, um, with state senators and assembly persons. We were asking for both co-sponsorships, which gives a bill more credibility and more likelihood of passing. They might take input from knowledgeable people and propose legislation and a bill that would say, you know, protect certain areas. And this was all volunteer. There was nothing paid. Um, the organizations were nonprofit and they could help offset the cost of my travel expenses, but there was, there was nothing else to be gained from this. Something it's massively regulated, and uh -huh. I would actually argue so much so that it might not even talent, uh, stand constitutional scrutiny if it were ever challenged in court. There are various sort of rules involved that one could make the argument, I think, uh, impede the your access to your government. You have these constant disclosures of how much time we're spending and on which program. You, you have a right to petition your government, and to the extent that they, uh, they levy more and more regulations on you, um, you know, I mean, that's, uh, that is an impediment to petitioning your government. The game in Washington all too commonly is, you know, how do I demagogue an issue? And, you know, you scream about big oil, big this, big that, and, uh, and imply that they're, you know, just nothing but exploiting the political system. And I was talking to a guy who's the Exxon lobbyist, and, uh, you know, apparently he said he was getting an earful from a member of Congress about why they don't do alternative fuels. You know, why don't you guys do solar panels or alternative forms of energy? And the guy just said, look, I, 
I, I'm sure there's a solar panel lobbyist somewhere, but, you know, we <laughs> drill oil. That's what we do. And uh, it's not, you know, if you, uh, I don't know, if you make uh, picture frames, you know, that's like asking the guy who makes picture frames why he doesn't make bicycles. I don't know that lobbyists have too much or too little access. Um, there's an assumption that all money in politics is bad. This election cycle, even so far, is proving anything. It's that Washington and politicians have become way too disconnected from what the people think. Regulation by the government is needed in order to keep an equal standing for those involved in lobbying. Without such regulations, there could be inequality of representation and a potentially corrupt system. Too much regulation could also disrupt the political system as it can impede on our right to petition. Um, I think what's happening a lot with lobbying, if you just look today at who a lot of lobbyists are, they are former elected representatives. But it is true that access oftentimes has to do with, you know, who you are. Certain lobbyists get to speak to certain officials and others don't because those officials don't support the kind of thing that these lobbyists want to talk about. Because because there are environmental lobbyists who become politicians who are, or who end up working for companies too. Um, so, so whatever it is, it has to be some system that, that allows equal access, equal money, equal fairness to, to, to legitimate uh, concerns and points of view. There, do, there does need to be some degree of regulation, uh, particularly in lobbying, because it so easily becomes an opportunity for corruption to pervade politics. And now for politics not to represent people anymore, or even the broader interest, but narrowly defined special interests. I don't think we should ban lobbying, I just think that we should, because it does allow access. And to be fair, um, the businesses that drive this country, um, because they're innovative and successful, they have needs too, and they need to be heard. And, and so, so they can be heard, their needs can be heard about maybe the exporting or importing of American jobs, keeping their jobs here, all, those, all these things, having access to areas, developing new energy technologies or manufacturing technologies. I mean, they have legitimate concerns. Although controversial at times, lobbying is one of the strengths of our political system because it exemplifies our rights in the Constitution. Exercising such rights is one of the essential ideas of our Founding Fathers. Allowing people to defend and fight for what they believe in and for their cause is exactly what our government is based upon.